in life, anything you do, please remember tomorrow. Remember that there is tomorrow. Don't forget. Then watch this video along with me. God bless you as you do so. Do you think there's a life after death? I do. Are you afraid of dying? No, I'm not. Because I feel like once you're dead, there's all the worries and all the pain is gone. You know, we talk about people passing on. Where do people pass on to? Well, I'd like to think heaven, right? Like the other side. Do you ever read the Bible? I have not. Have you ever tried to put an appliance together and you made a mess of it? Then you look at the instructions? Most men do that. And after things go wrong, they look at the instructions. That's what humanity has done with the Bible. Haven't looked at the instruction book. It tells you how you can live forever. Did you know that? I didn't. See if you can guess what the Bible says on what you should do to go to heaven. I think just overall being a good person. You know, a lot of people, if you ask them, do you think you're a good person? Yeah, I think I'm a good person. And the problem is they judge themselves by their own standard. So let's see if you're going to make it to heaven. This is the big question. Do you think you're a good person? Well, now you made me <laughs> think twice about that. Well, I, I, I think I'm a good person, okay. yeah. That's normal because you've got your own standard to judge by. Yeah. God gives his own standard. It's the Ten Commandments. So you're familiar with the Ten Commandments. Okay, I'm going to take you through a few of them to see how you're going to do on Judgment Day. And this is your measurement to see if you're a good person. All I need from you is your honesty. Can you be honest? Yeah. The Ninth Commandment says not to lie. How many lies do you think you've told in your life? I've told some lies, yeah. So what do you call someone who tells lies? A liar. So what are you? A bad person. Have you ever stolen something, taken something that belongs to somebody else in your whole life, irrespective of its value, even if it's small? I have. What do you call someone who steals? A bad person, yeah. yeah stay with me, no. this, is, this is worth it, because it's going to show you how you need God's mercy and how you can get it, and how you can find everlasting life. Have you ever used God's name in vain? I have, yeah. Do you love your mum? I love her. Would you ever use her name as a cuss word? No. Why not? Because that's bad. It's you your mum. Yeah, that's you my would. mother, yeah, yeah, I love her. But God is the one that gave you a mother. He gave you life, and his name is holy, and you've used his holy name as a cuss word. It's called blasphemy, very serious in his eyes. Can you handle a little, something a little personal? Sure, now we're here already, right? <laughs> Jesus said if you look with lust, sexual desire, you commit adultery in your heart. Have you ever done that? Yes. Okay, here's a summation. This is for you to judge yourself. Natalie, you've told me you're a lying thief, a blasphemer, and an adulterer at heart. If God judges you by those Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, are you going to be innocent or guilty? Guilty. Heaven or hell? Hell. Does that concern you? It does. Yeah, it should. This is your life. Yeah. Okay, now let me show you what we're doing. Imagine you're a doctor and you've got someone in front of you who thinks they're extremely well. They look fit, healthy and well. But you know differently. You've seen x-rays and this person is going to be dead in two weeks. He's got a cancerous disease. You've got a cure in your pocket. Do you show him the x-rays or give him the cure? Which way would you go? I give him the cure. Do you know he's not going to take it? Do you know why? Why? Because he thinks he's well. He's going to say, well, Doc, what are you giving me this cure for? I'm healthy and well. Look at me. I'm fit and healthy. If the doctor knows what he's doing, he'll show him the x-rays. He'll make him sweat, make him shake a little, to a point where he says, oh, Doc, this is deadly serious. <gasps> what should I do? Now he's ready for the cure because he's seen his disease. He's going to appreciate and appropriate it. Does that make sense? It does. So what I've done with you is I've got a cure. I can tell you how you can live forever, but I didn't want to give you the cure where you thought you were morally well. I showed you the x-rays of the Ten Commandments. Make you a little scared, make you sweat a little to say, oh, what should I do? Now you're ready for the cure. Have you ever heard of Jesus dying on the cross? I have, yeah. yeah most people have, mm -hmm. but they don't know this, and this will change everything for you if you can get a grip of it. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law, Jesus came and paid the fine. That's why he said, it is finished, just before he died. That's a weird thing to say before you die, it is finished. But he's saying the debt has been paid. Natalie, if you're in court and you've got speeding fines, and somebody else pays them, a judge will let you go. Even though you're guilty, say, Natalie, you've got a lot of speeding fines here, but someone's paid them, you can leave. And it's legal. Well, God can legally dismiss your case because Jesus paid the fine. He can legally let you live forever. He can take the death sentence off you, all because of what Jesus did on the cross through his death and resurrection. 
And according to the Bible, all you have to do to find everlasting life is repent of your sins. That's you turn from them, and then you trust in Jesus like you trust a parachute. If you're going to jump out of a plane 10,000 feet, why would you put on a parachute? Because I don't want to die. Yeah, and your motivation is fear. You fear death, and that makes you put the parachute on. So that fear is your friend, it's not your enemy, because it's doing you a favor. Can you see that? Yeah. So I try to put the fear of God in you today because I care about you, hoping you'll see the fear as your friend, not your enemy. It's going to mean that you mean business with God. You're going to come to God and say, oh, I've done things I know are morally wrong. I need your forgiveness. I'm going to trust in Jesus so I can have everlasting life. Is that making sense? It makes complete sense, yes. So when are you going to repent and put your faith in Jesus? Starting today, honestly. I mean, you opened my eyes. You really expanded my mindset on that. Can I pray with you? Would that embarrass you if I prayed with you? Father, I pray for Natalie. Thank you for her open heart today and her honesty and acknowledging her sins. I pray she'll understand your love for her expressed through the cross and how she can have everlasting life through genuine sorrow for her sin and faith in Jesus. And this day be born again and pass from death to life all because of your kindness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can I give you a book that I've written? Of course. Let me grab it. This is called Scientific Facts in the Bible. Do you know why you're weeping? The Bible speaks of something called contrition. Have you ever heard of that word? That means to be sorry for your sins, to be contrite. And the Bible says godly sorrow works repentance. In other words, you'll truly repent when you're genuinely sorry for your sins. So those tears are very, very precious. <laughs> Coming up to me really made my day and it just opened my eyes and I've been wanting to get closer to God because a lot of things have been happening in my life. I believe God's hand has been on you today and it's for your good and for your eternity. And the Bible says there's more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons. So you've made heaven rejoice, you made me rejoice and you made a lot of people that watch this rejoice too.